Hello dear viewers, welcome back to the channel Basic Home First Aid. Today I'm going to show you how to apply Basic First Aid for a fracture which refers to a break or crack in a bone. It is quite common around us and the prompt care you give can help prevent further pain, damage and a life-threatening disability. So stay with us till the end. Before I continue, if you are new here, click on the subscription button and the notification bell to know when we release a new video. Considerable force is needed to break a bone unless it is diseased or old. Bones that are still growing, for example in children, are supple and may split, bend or crack. Usually it follows a fall from a height, a road traffic accident or a heavy blow. A fracture can be open or closed. In an open fracture, the broken bone ends may pierce the skin surface or there may be a wound at the fracture site carries an increased risk of being infected in a closed fracture the skin above the fracture is intact a fracture can also be stable or unstable in a stable fracture the broken bones do not move because they are not completely broken while in an unstable fracture the broken bones can easily move there is a risk they may damage blood vessels nerves and organs around the injury they should be handled carefully to prevent further injury. How do you recognize a fracture? There is usually a deformity, swelling and bruising at the fracture site, pain and difficulty in moving the area, shortening, bending or twisting of the limb, difficulty in moving a limb or inability to walk, a wound possibly with bone ends protruding, signs of shock especially for fractures of bones of the thigh or pelvis, a cracking sound or sensation usually called crepitus of bone ends which can be felt by or held by the casualty. Do not try to elicit this. Your aims with such a casualty are to prevent movement at the injury site and arrange transportation to the hospital with comfortable support during the transit. As a general rule, when you suspect a fracture, you must immobilize the injured part before giving any additional care. To immobilize an extremity injury, you must use a splint. There are three types of splints, soft, rigid, and anatomic. Soft splints include four folded blankets, towels, pillows. Rigid splints include boards, metal strips, cartoons, folded magazines or newspapers. Why anatomic splints use the body as a splint? For example, an arm can be splinted to the chest. To splint an injured body part, support the injured part in the position in which you find it. Advise the casualty to keep still. If possible, have the victim or bystander help you. Cover any open wounds with a dress and bandage to help control bleeding and prevent infection. Use direct pressure unless the bleeding is located directly over the suspected fracture. Check the area below the injury site to check for warmth and color. Apply the splint to immobilize the joints or bones above and below an injured area. If you are using a rigid splint, pad the splint so that it is contoured to the injured part. This padding will help you prevent further injury. Secure the splint in place with cravats, bandages or white strips of cloth. Avoid securing the splint directly over an open wound or the injury. For lower limb fractures, move the uninjured leg to the injured one and secure with broad fold bandages or a long cloth material. Always tie the knots on the uninjured side. We check below the injury site for feeling of warmth and color. Loosen the splint if the victim complains of numbness or if the area below the injury site is discolored or becomes cold. Do not raise an injured leg. Elevate an uninjured leg if shock is present. While waiting for help to transport to the hospital, check the circulation beyond a sling or bandage every 10 minutes. If it is impaired, loosen the bandages. Transport the casualty as soon as help is available, preferably in a car while protecting the splinted area. Cautions. Do not move the casualty until the injured part is secured and supported unless he is in immediate danger. Do not allow the casualty to eat and drink because an anesthetic may be needed. If a bone end is protruding, do not press on it. Build up parts of clean, soft, non-fluffy material around the bone until you can bandage over it without pressing on the injury. Thank you for watching this video, hope it helps someone out there. Don't forget to click on the subscription button to know when we release a new life saving video. Stay safe and never forget this, if not you, who?